Natalie, I'm on my way home. What's for dinner? Are you done cooking? I'm starving. If you haven't decided what to cook yet, I'm in the mood for some meat. Joe, I'm sorry. I haven't prepared dinner yet. Okay, I'll have meat then. Sorry for asking you last minute. Can we order takeout tonight? Or maybe you could grab something on your way home. What's up? Everything okay with you? I don't feel well today. Did you catch a cold? I went to the clinic to get checked, and they said it's probably just a cold. I don't have a fever or a cough, and I feel kind of weird. I feel so tired, and I don't have much of an appetite. I hope it's just a cold. I hope it's not something serious. If the symptoms don't settle down, I'm thinking of getting checked at the hospital. Damn. Don't you think you're overreacting? You're still in your 30s. It's just a cold. Do you think so? I collapsed from overwork the other day and ended up in the hospital. But now I'm bouncing back like nothing happened. You still don't know if it's due to overwork, right? No doubt about it. I was definitely overworking myself. Compared to me, you're only doing part-time. So you shouldn't be as tired as I am. Just get some sleep and you'll be fine. It's easy for you to say, but I really don't feel good. Isn't there a saying that illness comes from the mind? If you believe you're healthy, you can become healthy. You're so nonchalant, aren't you? I was really worried when you collapsed. I was worried sick, thinking, what if you didn't wake up? It was nerve-wracking. Guess my body just couldn't handle all that over time. But even with that, I'm pushing through without going to the hospital, you know? And Natalie, we're tough, right? Just shake off that cold with some grit. You shouldn't underestimate a cold. Plus, I don't want to end up like you, so I've decided to go to the hospital after all. What's with the attitude? No matter how fine you feel now, Suddenly keeling over is a sign that something's up. I told you I'm fine. The doctors aren't going to take you seriously just because you're feeling a bit under the weather. But... Hospital bills are ridiculous. I'll grab something on my way home. Sleep well and make sure you have dinner ready for tomorrow, okay? Yeah, I'll do my best to get better as soon as possible. Hey, Joe, are you still at work? I just finished. What's up? I'm so sorry. I'm still not feeling well. Not again. I'm sorry. I took the day off from work today and just stayed in bed all day. But I'm still not feeling any better. Sorry, but is it okay if we just eat out or order delivery for dinner tonight? Yeah, it's all good. But seriously, not feeling any better even after a whole day of sleep? I'm so tired, and I don't have much of an appetite. Hmm, I think you're being too much of a wimp. Huh? I bust my ass working all day and night, just so you could eat. You're a housewife, right? Can't you at least fix dinner for once? I'm a housewife, but I work too. Working part-time isn't actually considered a real job. It's basically just earning some extra cash, right? Just because the hours are shorter doesn't mean I'm not doing the same work as full-timers. Plus, since I earn less, I put extra effort into managing things at home, don't I? Slacking off on house chores is just like slacking off at work. Nobody takes a sick day just for a slight cold, right? I mean, if you called in sick just because of a runny nose, they definitely call you out on it, right? Yeah, but even though it's just a part-time job, juggling work and household chores is quite tough. Well, it would really help if you could lend a hand even just a little. 
Whoa, hold up. You're telling me to do the chores? Don't be ridiculous. What I'm doing isn't as simple as your job, you know? But you could at least help me when I'm sick. Complaining about feeling unwell is like saying you can't manage yourself properly. Your co-workers are probably annoyed too. So get yourself sorted out already. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Anyway, I'll go to the hospital tomorrow so I can get better soon. Oh, God. You better pay it with your own money. I know. Oh, wait. What? Do you have life insurance? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. If you get diagnosed with a serious illness, you won't be able to get insurance after that. I guess so. And the recipient, of course, is me, right? Yeah, why do you ask? Why are we talking about insurance all of a sudden? Well, you know, just in case. You know, you think it's just a little cold, but then it turns out there's some serious stuff hiding behind it. What do you mean? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Wait, are you by any chance expecting my life insurance to pay out? Of course not. Besides, there's no chance of you getting a life-threatening illness in the first place. I'm just checking to make sure. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to grab a bite and head home. See you later. Natalie, I just saw your call. What was it about? Don't tell me you're not feeling well again. It's just a cold. Stop making such a big deal out of it. It's depressing. It's not like that. I heard back from the hospital today. The hospital? Everything was okay with you, right? Yeah, I'm fine, but... I got the test results back. And they wanted me to bring you with me, to hear about it. Why me? You're my husband. I don't want to. What? Why do I have to go? You're fine by yourself. Why not? Why not? You're an adult. I don't think that matters. I'm busy working my ass off. I don't have time to go to the hospital with you. Can't you ask your boss to somehow get a day off? Even if it's just half a day. I'm feeling anxious being alone. I'm sure the doctor has something important to discuss. Anxiety? Grow up. <laughs> I'm busy, so forget it. Besides, it's a waste to use a paid day off just to listen to the doctor. You can go alone and tell me about it later. You're acting like it's someone else's problem. Well then, I'll go alone and talk to the doctor about the situation. Are you sure you don't want to go? I don't care. Stop being so stubborn. Anyway, it's probably not a big deal. I'm not going to get upset no matter what the result is. Okay, I'll go tomorrow. Natalie, have you already gone to the hospital? Yes, I did. I just came home. Are you on your lunch break? Yeah, I was still a little concerned. How did it go? Joe, I need you to calm down and listen to me. Um, okay. The doctor said I have three months left to live. What? Three months? Seriously? Yeah, I was so surprised too. I never thought it would be this serious. I want you to come with me to the hospital again. Oh, no, I don't want to. Well... The doctor said you have three months left, right? Well, if it's already set in stone that you're gonna die, getting treatment would be pointless, wouldn't it? Why are you being so careless? The three-month estimate is just a rough guideline. Treatment might extend my life further. But it costs money, right? 
You have a point, but I think it's too early to give up. There are people who live much longer than their prognosis suggests. Even if it costs money, I believe we should do what we can. Besides, we're still in our thirties. Young or old, you can't avoid death. No matter how long you live, being bedridden forever would be boring, wouldn't it? Caregiving is tough, too. Personally, I can't agree with struggling in vain after receiving a terminal diagnosis. Oh. Oh, that's right. How about we go out together to make memories? How about a trip to the hot springs? I don't think this is a good time doing that. Oh, come on. We don't have much time left. Rather than blowing cash on useless treatments, this seems far more worthwhile. Yeah, I could probably swing taking a break from work this weekend. Let's leave this Saturday. This Saturday? It's too soon. Aren't you busy at work? I think I can take this weekend off, so no worries. Um... Well, I understand if you're feeling down, and I get that the hot spring trip might not be on your mind. So leave all the hotel arrangements to me. Huh. All right, it's settled then. Let's stay at a hotel with a great view and make some memories together. Wow, I'm surprised. Just talked about having only a few months left, and here you are looking oddly cheerful. Really? <laughs> I'm too shocked to feel as excited as you right now. Hey, listen. If you keep moping around like that, you're just going to shorten your lifespan even more. What? You know what? Remember what I told you before? Illness comes from the mind. Anyway, now that I think about it, it's been a while since we went on a trip together. Let's just enjoy the moment and have the best time of our lives. Well, if you say so. Joe, what the hell have you done? Whoa, who are you? Are you a ghost? A ghost? It's Natalie. Natalie? Why are you so surprised? No way, I'm not falling for this. Natalie wouldn't message me. I don't know who you are. Cut out this stupid prank. It's incredibly insensitive. Natalie is no longer in this world. You're so rude. I'm alive and well. Huh? Are you sure you're Natalie? Yes, I am. If you don't believe me, I'll tell you my birth date, address, and everything. Oh... You're still alive. Are you disappointed that I am? Well, of course not. I'm just glad you're safe. You're so fake. You push me down the stairs. Oh. I'm very much alive. Too bad your plan didn't work out. What are you talking about? What makes you say that? Do you have any proof? There's no evidence or anything. It was just you and me at the scene. We arrive at the spa resort. You told me that you had reserved a room with a great view, and you took me there. As soon as we got to the room, you pushed me down the hotel's emergency staircase. Oh, there's no way I would have done that. I mean, why are you still alive? There's no way you could have survived that fall from that height. You ran away the moment you pushed me off. So that's why you have no idea I survived. Honestly, I was just lucky. I fell onto soft grass. And maybe because I instinctively protected my head with my hands. Miraculously, I only got away with a few scratches. I see. Why did you do that? I didn't mean to hurt you. I just wanted to show you the view outside but my hand slipped. Is it possible for your hand to slip and push your wife off? And if you didn't mean any harm, wouldn't you stay and try to help instead of running away? I was scared. I couldn't bear to watch you fall down the stairs, so I... 
just ran away. You're full of lies. What? You were after my insurance money, weren't you? When I mentioned going to the hospital, you were concerned about whether I had life insurance. Uh... Stop acting dumb. Just be honest with me. You did it on purpose, didn't you? Fine. Since you're gonna be gone soon, I'll tell you what. I pushed you down the stairs for your own sake. For me? You only have three months left to live, right? Wouldn't it be better to depart from this world while still in a happy mood on a trip, rather than enduring three painful months of suffering? Um, no. And to be honest, it's a waste of money to pay medical expenses for someone who is going to kick the bucket soon anyway. The sooner you go, the less money it costs. So, I thought I can fake the accident. You're still in your 30s. You only have three months left to live. Losing hope for life, it wouldn't be surprising if you jumped off on your own, right? What are you talking about? What? You're the one with three months to live. Huh? Wait, you've been misunderstanding all along. You thought I was the one who had three months to live? Was I wrong? Yes. Hold up. You're kidding, right? You were the one who wasn't feeling well. I just had a cold. It lasted a little while, but I'm fine now. Well, then... You collapsed the other day, and you were rushed to the hospital, remember? Yeah. Next thing I know, I was in the hospital bed. I was in there for a minute, but I made it out. You were discharged, but we were waiting for the results of your tests. That's why I wanted you to come with me to the hospital. You were talking about me? Yes, I was. Oh my god. I'm stunned. But I feel fine. According to the doctor, the disease can progress without symptoms. So you're saying I'm getting worse and worse as we speak? I guess so. What the hell? We have to go to the hospital right now. Where are you? I'm at my parents' house. Come back here now. Come with me to the hospital. Why do I have to go to? You're my wife. I'm not going. Don't be silly. Your husband is sick. You didn't try to make me go to the hospital, saying I was overreacting when I felt unwell, remember? Are you stupid? My condition is worse than yours. Let's get a divorce. What? Why? I don't want to be with you. You tried to kill me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I pushed you away. I thought you only had three months to live. Well... Money's a factor too, but I just wanted to ease your pain. So I went ahead and did that. You're lying. What? I was in your way, and you wanted me gone as soon as possible. No, it's not that. You were cheating on me. Uh... After you pushed me down the stairs, I went back home to recuperate. And I also hired a private investigator to look into you. Turns out, you've been cheating with your co-worker. I've had a feeling that you were, but I never thought it was true. What? You noticed? You didn't even care when I was feeling unwell. Even on the weekends, you would tell me you have to go to work. I already knew long ago that there was no love left for me. I see. Then I apologize for cheating on you. But now's not the time to be arguing about cheating, right? I've been told I don't have long to live. Please, don't divorce me and support me. I don't want to. Why not? Like I said, I can't be with a man who tried to kill me. I won't do such thing anymore. I don't trust you. I only got three months to live. You're no longer my husband. Natalie, 
You were planning to use my insurance money and start a new life with your lover, right? You're such a piece of shit. I can't even get angry anymore. I'm really sorry. My lawyer will keep in touch with you. Oh, but before my lawyer, maybe the police might get to you first. The police? Don't tell me you... you tipped off the police? Of course I did. I was pushed down the stairs. I doubt I'll ever get caught. There's no evidence that I pushed you. I wasn't even recording a video of you falling or anything. Haha. <laughs> what? You didn't know? There's security cameras all over the hotel. Of course, including the emergency staircase. Ha. Huh. Well, maybe you were so preoccupied with getting rid of me that you didn't even notice the cameras, huh? No, wait. This is different. What's different? You can't escape with solid evidence like that. You're definitely going to be charged with attempted murder. <laughs> Natalie, I'm sorry. I apologize for everything. I only cheated on you out of a moment of weakness. You're the only person I really love. You understand, right? Please don't abandon me. You're in a lot of trouble. I wonder if you'll end up in prison, even if you only have three months left to live. I don't want to go to prison. You better reflect on your actions. You might die before you even get the chance. Oh, no. Well, then, goodbye forever. Me and Joe finalized our divorce. Almost immediately after the divorce, he was arrested for attempted murder. However, due to being diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, his detention was suspended and he was admitted to the hospital. It seems my ex-husband was planning to have his lover take care of him during his illness, but the lover was unaware of his health condition. She got scared and ran away from him. His parents are both gone, so he had nobody else to rely on. My ex-husband is reportedly living a lonely battle against his illness. After the divorce, I returned to my parents' house. I switched from working part-time to full-time. Not experiencing any health issues might be due to distancing myself from my ex-husband, who is the source of stress. This whole ordeal made me realize how grateful I am to be alive and well. From now on, I'll cherish each day as it comes. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.